ой, ой, в субботу. Мне, в принципе, без разницы драться с кем из пары Брэд Роджерс и Джордж Барнин. То есть буду драться сильнейшим. Кто победит, все мы будут драться. А так готов драться с любым, готов к любому повороту событий. Uh, to me, it really doesn't matter uh, if I was to come out victorious against uh, Andre Olovsky and go into the second round, I can fight either Brett Rogers or, um, or Josh Barnett, you know, obviously whoever the winner of that fight is, uh, and even so, you know, I'm ready for any turn of the events, however it spans out. It seems like Fedor, Alistair, and Fabricio are the favorites, just in terms of public perception. Josh, Andre, Sergey, the rest of you, do you guys feel like you're being underestimated in this? You're not being given a fair shot? Uh, it doesn't really matter to me. I don't care what people think. I don't care where they rank me. I don't care about belts or titles or any of that crap. The only thing you can do is murder people. You do that, you get everything you want. And that's our job. Our job is not to be, you know, at the apple of anybody's eye. Our job is not to be uh, someone's, you know, favorite dog and pony show so that they can trump them all, about all around the world. That's just things that come with uh, adulation and interest in uh, entertainment or sports in general. Um, you know, if you're the favorite, that presents one, uh, uh, you know, whole path that you're going to go down. Well, if you lose, and then uh, the, that whole deal, you know, people expect this out of you and, and such. And then if you're not the favorite, then it's like, oh, you could have the uh, I've got nothing to lose attitude. I mean, either way, it's a story, just from a different angle. And as long as you guys are entertained, then I guess it's doing its job. I'm definitely the underdog for this fight against Sergei Haritona because I lost three of my fights and, and could visit. So, Josh, absolutely right. You have to one step at a time. I'm focusing my fight against Sergei and Sari, and we'll see what's happening after. Yeah, man, this is definitely a, a roller coaster. Um, I mean, I look at it like this down two. You know, when I, when I went out to the States, I went out to the States to fight and then came back into the States. So that was my turn, you know, to just kind of push forward. I mean, I can talk the talk on, you know, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. But it's like everybody said, you know what I mean? Uh, the fight is gonna show itself. You know, I'm in it to win. I'm out here to have fun as well, so, you know. I mean, all eight of you are sitting, you must be looking at one another, realizing you're gonna be a part of something very big this year. Well, you know, when I look at them, I think, what a fine group of young men here. Very outstanding, so quite attractive, well-dressed. Um, I should think that when they get up in the morning, they, they have to take a little extra time in the mirror to admire that which has been created for this world. He snickered, yes. That's a half smile, that's it's like a full smile from someone else. Uh, yeah, everybody's gonna view this differently. You know, everyone's going to filter it through their own lens. Um, for sure, this is going to be significant. I think that it's the greatest collection of heavyweights, as everybody has said, but it's not just a, a paper thing, because um, yeah, everybody has, has walked the walk before. Everybody, most of the guys coming in here have owned titles of some sort. Um, you know, Sergey, you know, a lot of you won't, are talking about titles like UFC or Strike Force or Pride and such, but, but Sergey has titles from 32-man tournaments in Russia. I mean, that's a pretty impressive accomplishment in, in my book, uh, just because it, you know, we might not be known of, of, of such an uh, accomplishment, it doesn't diminish it. So everybody in here is, is, is tough as nails. Um, and I think that when, you know, there is a lot of factors that are gonna play into this, uh, if injuries come about or anything like that. Uh, but if this tournament comes through as expected and planned, this is going to be a total earth shaker in the world of MMA, which is predominantly uh, seen through only one lens for most of the public. And after this, it's, it's, there's no way that you can view it any, any other way. Uh, the, the importance of the heavyweights uh, that fought here in this tournament. Uh, the biggest thing, I think, from my perspective is going to be how you, the media, perceive it and whether you're going to take the onus to look at it subjectively or, or is there still going to be a bias? What do you mean by subjectively? Involved? Well, you know, if, if it's a if it's if it's a constant three letter, um, you know, comparison. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you, if, if everyone's just going to say, well, if it's not if it's not the UFC, then it's not as good. Then 
then you're, you're really sort of shitting on all that we're doing here. So I just want everybody to look at it from a, from a completely sub, uh, objective and subjective you know, standpoint from, for what it is, for what we bring to the table, for what we're going to accomplish. And uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter where, and at the end of the day, it doesn't matter where we fight, where these things get put together. I'm glad to be here in Strike Force, and I think it's a great organization, but it's about the fighters themselves. You know, we have to become the champions. We're the ones that go out there and train. We're the ones that, that you know, bleed and, and break our bones in the ring, and uh, our accomplishments will shine regardless of what cage or ring or back alley or whatever it takes to accomplish what it is to go out there and be a fighter. Thank you. Um, Alistair, would you, would you also like to comment? You, you created a bunch of records, broke a bunch of records uh, this last year. Where does this potentially winning this tournament, or would that rank with the dream titles, the K1 titles, and uh, for you personally? Oh, I uh, always take one thing uh, at a time. And uh, that was a couple years ago, the Strike Force uh, title, then the K1 title, then the dream title. And this is my next goal. This is it. I have here the, the seven best uh, fighters in the world. Undoubtedly, the, the winner of this tournament is going to be the number one on the planet. Would you say this would be the sweetest one for you of the last, with the three all together, Dream, K1, this one? Yes, but it's going to be uh, the biggest, biggest thing happening in MMA. I mean, there's no doubt. The winner of this tournament is number one, the best fighter in the world. I feel, I feel great. I feel, you know, mostly shocked. You know, I feel without all the. All these top dogs, you know what I mean? Heavyweights, everybody want you know, get in to win. And uh, the way I see it, it's just, it's just me as a fighter, you know, looking at myself, I can only focus for myself. And I'm seeing, you know, this is definitely a great opportunity to showcase myself as a strike force heavyweight fighter, you know, here in the States and all over the world, you know? So, I mean, I'm cool with, with everything. My philosophy has always been, that, look, my position is we're growing the sport right? They have a great league, they're doing their part. We have a better heavyweight division than any other martial arts league in the world. And it's very clear to me when you see these guys up here that that is truly the case. But they're doing a good job promoting their league. We're going to do a great job promoting our league. So why can't there be two leagues? And that's my position. And I've, I've always felt, uh, in fact, uh, in Ariel's interview, I said, look, I don't have to hurt their business to grow my business. You know, and so that's been my philosophy. I don't, I don't wake up and worry about what's going on on the other side of the fence. I have enough work uh, to do here that I'm only going to worry about what's on my side of the fence. Scott, there are three reserve bouts. Is there a ranking in terms of who would be the first one to slide in if someone gets injured? I mean, right now the uh, the only reserve match that is confirmed to go in if there was an injury would be the Shane Del Rosario fight with Lavar. Uh, but keep in mind, uh, based on what happens, uh, I think you, you're on the conference call, we talked about the uh, committee uh, led by Corey Schaefer. That's, you know, it'll, so it'll go back to committee and as to how we move forward if somebody drops out, one of the eight guys has to drop out due to injury. Uh, Verdum said he watched your guys fight a thousand times. I'd like to know how many times have you watched the Verdum fight? And then I have a second part to that question. Um, so actually, if to speak about, well, usually, you know, how many times I watch the fight, usually I watch it one time and it's enough for me. Speaking about my last fight, actually, well, I watched it several times. Once myself and several times with my friends. Okay, great. And the second part of my question, I read recently in a uh, in an interview that Fedor said he hadn't gotten any tape on Antonio Silva, his next opponent. Has, at that point, has this changed? Has he looked at any video of his opponent on Saturday? Yes, I did watch. Um, the fights of Antonio Silva, and also I watched his fights with uh, Verdun, Fabrizio Verdun. Any thoughts on those fights? Well, I did make some conclusions for myself. <laughs> A question for Fedor and then also for Brett Rogers. Um, Fedor, bef before you fought Verdun, 
you were like unbeatable. Nobody could beat you. Did you ever feel that you were unbeatable? And after, and uh, now that you're uh, in this tournament, are you training harder than ever? And also after that, Brett Rogers, before you lost to Fedor, did you feel unbeatable? So, and well, I understand clearly that the loss, this is just the matter of time, that sometime it was supposed to happen and it happened. Uh, and I'm always ready for the loss. Uh, but at the same time, I'm thankful to the God for all my victories, for all my wins. And I'm thankful to the God for my losses as well. And frankly speaking, I'm not taking some, you know, extra information which I don't need into my mind. Yes, I did feel unbeatable, unstoppable. I think we all, as fighters growing in the rankings and whatnot, that's how we feel. So, um, even now, you know, I still feel untouchable, unbeatable. And I'm going to continue to have that way or feel that way because, I mean, it's a fine line between cocky and confidence. Somehow, somewhere, I get somewhere in between. So, that's what I'm going to say. We're going to wrap up our press conference.